Welcome to a journey into the enigmatic world of quantum mechanics. Today, we're unraveling the mind-bending concepts behind the double-slit experiment. Our story starts from the end of 18th century. There was a big debate back then about whether light has wave nature or particle nature. Newton supporting the particle nature side and Christian Huygens supporting the wave nature of light. However, there was no evidence on either side. In 1801, Thomas Young introduced his double-slit experiment to end this debate once and for all. In this experiment, particles, such as electrons or photons, are fired one by one towards a barrier with two slits onto a screen placed behind the barrier. Now, if Newton was right, the screen should have two bands of light indicating particle nature of light. But the results were rather interesting. The screen had multiple fringes of light, indicating wave function of light. Some of these fringes were brighter than others. Just like a wave's, when similar elevated parts of the waves collide, it adds to its value and forms a bright pattern on the screen. Similarly, when dissimilar parts of the wave collide, it results in dark patches, cancelling their effect. So, this experiment proved wave nature of light. Is that it? Not at all. Scientists were baffled with this experiment and wanted to know more about this. So, they slowed the source and changed the source to electron gun to detect which slit electron passes through. Again, they found multiple fringes, showing the wave nature of electron. Now the interesting part begins. This time, they decided to observe this whole experiment and notice which slit does the electron go through. And when does it change its nature from particle to wave? To their surprise, the result of the experiment totally altered. They found two fringes of light on the screen again, showing the particle nature of electron. This didn't answer their question at all. Instead, it rose so many more questions. How can observing have any effect on the experiment? They tried this experiment with different variations. Different types of detectors were used each time but the result was the same. Whenever the electron was observed, it showed characteristics of particle nature. And whenever it wasn't, it showed characteristics of wave nature. To understand it further, we must understand how observation works. Observing anything seems like a passive action, while in reality, it is not. To observe a thing, one must interact with it. For example, when we see an object, it is only visible to us because a light ray bounced off it to our eye. Now, the light beam also has some energy. When looking at larger objects, it doesn't have much effect on its existence, but when it comes to tiny particles like electron, the story doesn't remain the same. Now, even a tiny interaction can have a large impact. And, we can't just see electrons with our naked eye. So, we need a more sensitive detector which can detect each electron individually. Now, if a normal ray of light can affect a particle so small, then why can't it be affected by a more powerful source? But, it still doesn't answer why electron changed its wave function to particle function. You are right. It doesn't. We don't know the answer to that yet. This phenomenon challenges our classical understanding of reality and has profound implications for the nature of particles at the quantum level. Over the years, this experiment has spurred discussions, sparked new theories, and shaped the foundation of quantum mechanics. Keep learning, and maybe this will get you your own Nobel Prize. Join us as we delve deeper into the mysteries of the quantum world. Thank you for watching.